Number 11, an EMF is induced by rotating a 1,000 turn, 20 centimeter diameter coil in the Earth's 5 times 10 to the minus 5th Tesla magnetic field. What average EMF is induced given the plane of the coil is originally perpendicular to the Earth's field and is rotated to be parallel to the field in 10 milliseconds? So, um, all right. So in order to find the induced EMF, we know we need to be using the formula over here on the right side that says that the EMF, and this is the induced EMF, is going to be equal to, the negative sign just kind of implies a direction. You can kind of just leave it out of these questions, all right? Uh, they're, in this particular case, they're just asking the magnitude, essentially. So leave it in, leave it out, it doesn't really matter, all right? But just, they're really asking for the magnitude. So it's the number of turns then multiplied by the change of the magnetic flux divided by the change in time. So... We know the number of turns, they told us 1,000. We know the time, they told us that this change is happening in 10 milliseconds. But now the question is, well, then what's the flux? Is the flux changing? So flux is then a function here. So EMF. Flux is a function of the magnetic field times the area times the uh, angle with respect to the normal of the area and the magnetic field. All right, check out number one for that explanation. So what we now realize is that if I have a changing magnetic flux, that must mean one of these three variables is changing. In this problem, which of the three variables is changing? Well, it sounds like the, well, you can think about, well, you can kind of think about it either way. You can think about it as either the angle is changing or the area exposed, all right, to that particular magnetic field is changing. It doesn't really make a difference, all right? It's going to be basically the same. So what, uh, since it's being, it says it's originally called perpendicular, and it's, since it's saying it's rotated, I think I'm going to, though, choose to view it from the, the uh, angle, okay? So this basically means that the change in my magnetic flux is then a function of this changing angle, okay? So I'm going to write it now, B times A times the cosine of a changing angle divided them by a change in time, okay? So it says now that the plane of the coil is originally perpendicular to the Earth's magnetic field. So what that means is that we have some coil. doesn't really matter how you view it. Here's the coil. We can view it like this. Actually, I'm going to view it like this, like it's laying on the floor or something. So then the uh, plane of the coil, so the plane is horizontal here. It's flat, and they're telling us that the plane of that coil is then, let me put that in blue, the plane of that coil is then uh, perpendicular to now the magnetic field. Okay, whichever way it's pointing, we don't really know. It could be pointing up, it could be pointing down, whatever. Uh, but what we do know is that these red magnetic field uh, vectors make a zero degree angle with the normal of that plane. And remember, this is the important angle. All right, between the magnetic field vectors and the normal. So originally the angle here between, it's not 90, it's actually zero. All right, uh, because we have to take it into account from the normal. Again, check out number one. All right, so the original angle here is zero. And then it says that it's going to be rotated so that it's parallel to the field. So then what's going to happen is now this coil will be rotated to be parallel with the field. Let me see if I can make an oval. There we go. And again, the magnetic field hasn't changed, so it's still pointing directly up. But now the normal here is pointing to the, let's just say I rotated it, you know, 90 degrees clockwise. So now this creates a right angle. So now the theta here is going to be 90, okay? So now when you view this problem, though, you got to be careful, all right? We should not simply, though, be plugging in like the final uh, degree minus the initial degree or something like that, because the final minus initial here would be 90 minus 0. And 90 minus 0 is going to be 90, and then the cosine of 90 is 0, and then this whole thing turns to 0. So then we'd say, well, there's a 0 induced EMF. So you got to be very careful about this, how you think this through, okay? Um, I, I know that it's experiencing a full magnetic flux at the, at, at the beginning, right? And then I know that it is experiencing no magnetic flux at the end. So the question then is, what is then the change in the magnetic flux? Well, it would then be the original magnetic flux minus then the final right? So when you do this, or, or excuse me, the final magnetic flux minus the initial, right? It doesn't really matter. I, the magnitude is what is important. That's just a directional thing, okay? So when I look at this formula, 
okay? In order for me to solve this, I technically have to view it like this. EMF is going to be N times now. BA cosine of theta, we can call it final, minus then BA cosine of theta initial or something. Don't worry about the signs here. That's really not what's kind of, that's not the important part. The important part is the calculation of the magnitude, okay? Because that's what we're being asked. So when we divide this now by the change in time, we'll be able to find our answer. And you'll notice if you just plug in final minus initial here or something, that change is going to be 90. And like I mentioned before, it's just going to turn out to be zero. But that can't be true. The magnetic flux is changing. The final value is zero. You have to put it like this. you got to phrase it like that. That's the only way to do it. Okay? Because the theta is kind of wrapped up in this cosine thing. So it it it's not a linear function. That's why it's not going to work the way you might think. So this is the number of turns is 1,000. Right? The uh, magnetic field, you can basically factor all these out. You know, BA... BA, you can factor that out, and that's just cosine final minus cosine initial, essentially. Or you can do initial minus final, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to look at the magnitude. So whatever sign I get at the end, I'm just going to make it positive anyway. Basically, I'm taking the absolute value, all right? So this is then going to be, if I had to rework it, I'm just going to write it, then I'm going to erase it. It would be cosine of theta final minus cosine of theta initial. I mean, you can't kind of factor out these cosines to then put, you know, final minus initial. That's why it doesn't work. So what it's going to work, what we're going to realize here is that this is going to be then 5 times 10 to the minus 5th times the area. Well, they told me the diameter and they told it to me in centimeters. So you know that that represents 0.2 uh, uh, centimeters. Uh, what am I talking about? <laughs> 20 centimeters is 0.2 meters. Okay. But that represents the diameter. So then you got to divide that by 2. So it's 0.1 meters is the radius. Okay. So now the area of a circle is pi r squared, so it's going to be pi times 0.1 squared, all right? Now multiply that all by my cosine of 90 minus the cosine of uh, 0, okay? Then take this all now and divide it by the change in time. They gave it to us in milliseconds, but you know we need that in seconds, so that's going to be 0 0.01, all right? Seconds. Now all you got to do is plug it on in. Okay, so this is 1,000 times 5 times 10 to the minus 5th times pi times 0.1 squared times then, basically it's just going to be cosine of 0, which is just 1. All right, it's negative, but I'm taking the absolute value. So you don't, you know, you can plug it in, but don't worry about it. And then divide that now by 0 0.01. So we get an answer here of an induced EMF then of 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.157 volts. There you go. That's it. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully that helps. All right, if it does, give us a hand. Subscribe, like, tell your friends. We'll see you soon. Take care.